sat in front of Dorney Castle. That's a couple of shooting locations here. It's quite busy at midday here in the car park. But what I've got is my 24 to 70 with a 10 stop filter on the front. We've come round into the additional car parking area where we can have a look across to the bridge and the castle. And we get a lovely reflection in the water because the sun's behind me and you can see it's quite bright. Um, it's not the best time of day to come. Best time of day would be sunset when the sun goes over towards the left hand side of the castle. If I just spin you around, you can have a look at that. And then the next shot I'm gonna take is more towards the right hand side of the bridge and use the bridge as a leading line up into the castle. I didn't think Scotland was going to be this warm. So with the castle behind me now, I've moved over to where the cafe is. And as you can see, I've got this lovely leading line up to the castle itself with the bridge here. The lock seems a little bit low at the moment, so it's mostly smelling of seaweed. But we'll see how this turns out. It's just on the journey up to Sky at the moment. So a couple more days left to get some great shots on this holiday. So we've just pulled over on the side of the road on the way to our accommodation in Skye because we could see a beautiful waterfall just over there. I'm going to go over and take some photos, see what it's like. Okay, so it's literally a one minute walk from where we just parked the car on the side of the road onto this peaty, boggy area where we get to this beautiful waterfall. Sun's just up to my left, quite high in the sky still because it's the middle of the day and, well, we're trying to get to our accommodation. But just look at this. So the first spot I'm going to take some photos from is on the left hand side of the river as you look up towards the waterfall. Nice little S bend, a little bit of a composition there going up. Maybe you can throw somebody on top of the rocks. A lot of those two lads are standing there right now just drinking some fresh water without filtering it. Maybe they'll get the shit. And then I'm going to move up a little bit, maybe inside the river itself. Let's see if I can get down low, do a bit of a long exposure of the water coming over the rocks with the waterfall up behind it. We'll see how that goes. Now I've moved up a bit and uh, gone on some rocks right in the middle of the river. And as you can see, there's this lovely little lone tree poking out the rock on the left, just being lit up by this, the afternoon sun. 
and a leading line of these tiny little waterfalls that lead up to the massive waterfall at the back. Got the ND filter on again, I'm going to do some long exposure and see how that turns out. So it's our first evening and we are now walking up to the top of the cliffs at Neast Point, apparently one of the best places in the country to see the sunset. We checked into our accommodation and came straight back out after a fat burger. A little bit windy tonight, hopefully it'll be a bit of a choppy sea up against the cliffs and we get a lovely sunset. There's a few clouds about, so we're just going to make our way up to the point where we take the photos now. So we've made it up to Neast Point. Golden hour is about to start soon, but just look at that view. I've got the camera set up ready in good time. We might make an AeroPress coffee, hadn't we? Yeah, we might make an AeroPress and sit and wait for the sun to go down and the sky to get lovely and colorful. Morning guys, it's day two on our Sky Scotland adventure and we are heading now to the fairy pools. We decided not to get up for sunrise because we were knackered and we've come to another very touristy spot. There was loads of people at Neast Point last night but we got some great photos. So paid five pounds, parked in the car park and now we are just making the uh, short one mile trek up to the fairy pools. Usually should be a good spot for any time of day, really. Uh, just make sure you've got a nice ND filter with you so you can smooth out the flow of the water. But um, yeah, looking forward to this. And I'll show you what it looks like when I get there. it to the top of fairy pools the last bit that everyone wants to go and take a photo of me too and uh yeah got the 24 to 70 setup polarizer filter 10 stop and this is the spot where you've got these low waterfalls and it frames this lovely triangular mountain behind so let you have a quick look i'm gonna head down there set myself up I'm going to take some photos. So this is the spot I've set up in the middle of the river. Down here, looking straight up towards this tiny little waterfall, framing that mountain at the back. Let's see how it turns out. I'm 
Okay, so spot number two, we've started coming back down from the, uh, the famous Fairy Pools location and found this little uh, waterfall in between the rocks, which as you can see, it lines up perfectly with the ravine that goes through that mountain at the back. I'm just lining these up and taking in long exposure. And I've got this little diagonal leading line in the rocks. We've got the polarizing filter on as well so we can see through the reflections in the water and get that leading line up into the shot. So we've just finished up the Fairy Glen and we're walking back to the car now. Go get some lunch. We spot this little tree right in the middle of the valley on its own. Who doesn't love a lone tree? So we just stopped at the side of the road on the A87 because we are going down to Elgol for sunset tonight and just taking a quick 10 minute time lapse of these clouds going over the top of the coloured mountains. Absolutely stunning. Everywhere you look in the sky, it is amazing. Everywhere. just pulled over on the side of the road down to Elgin and now I found some lovely treats on the side of the road there's a little place to pull in between two uh, passing places there's a single track road all the way down to not Elgin what am I on about I can't remember the name of the place I'll put it up on the screen but this tree with the colour mountains behind it could make for a lovely photo going you downstairs lav Check this out. So I've only been driving another five minutes since that tree where I called Elgol, Elgin, and we've got to the side of the lock where unfortunately the burger van's just shut for the day. So no extra scran for us, but it's an absolutely beautiful scene over to the mountains on that side. And there's this little white house just over there. Probably won't be able to see it on this wide angle. But I've got the big boy out and I'm going to uh, zoom in on it, about 100 mil actually, just to capture that with the mountains behind and the lock in front. Uh, you can do some more wide angles, the, the um, clouds are going lovely over the top of the mountains at the moment. Could do a little time lapse here. The sun is nice and low, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon as we head down to Elgol for sunset, but uh, yeah. Yet another lovely scene, just another five minutes down the road. Don't know if we'll ever make it to Elgol.
And so we are off to eat another lone tree. I've been looking around Oxford yet for years for lone trees. And I drive around Scotland and all I can find are lone trees. Is this gate for giants? Come on. I know I'm short, but this gate is ridiculous. So I'm just next to this little babbling brook. Made my way up towards this little lone tree with the coloured mountains in the background with these, these clouds just skimming across the top of them. It's absolutely incredible. A uh, bit of a patchy sun, some shadows and lovely light across the mountains. Um, and I'm just trying to use this path in front of me to be a bit of a leading line up to the tree with the mountains as the background. And I might move up to the tree a bit closer, see if there's any other compositions up there in a bit. But yeah, if you want to come here, it's on the way to Elgol. And just as you get round to the other side of the loch, there's a right hand turn into a little car park with a toilet as well. Because uh, Kaz always needs to have a wee. So we've made it down to the shores of El Gol and uh, we're on to the beach. It's about six o'clock in the evening. We have another two and a half hours until the sun sets. During that time, we'll get some golden hour. So this, we're on the uh, western coast here. So the sun will set over the sea uh, behind me and then hopefully light up the Cullen Mountains in the background, which look absolutely epic. Not in wide angle, of course. Um, with the foreground of some of these rocks is in the beach. If Kaz doesn't fall over. You all right? <laughs> Hungry. Well, there's a surprise. Mine, mine. Mine, 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 mine. Okay, so made it onto the windy beach. And Kaz, you know how much I like taking photos of cracks. Well, found a lovely bit of crack here. Leads all the way up to the mountains in the background. I'm doing some long exposures on the beach here. I'm sure everyone else has, but it's a cracking spot. The sun's going to set in a couple of hours. The clouds are just lipping across the top of the peaks of the Cullens in the distance. My hair looks fan bloody tastic. Just check this out. Tidy.
Right, so as you can see, the sun has now set and uh, the wind's picked up. Now it's um, got a little bit more brisk, hence the beanie and the down jacket. And we're losing the light quite rapidly here. So I think we're just about to wrap it up. But I've been shooting today with 14 mil and 20 mil primes. I'm trying to get a strong foreground. I've been up and down this beach looking for different compositions, taking lots of photos. I can't wait to get back and edit them and show you guys, but this place is just epic. It really is. I mean, it's fantastic.